I did it guys. I actually bought a $30 airbrush. This is the .0 PZ360 and we're going to run it through a couple little paces. I'm going to do an unboxing and an initial review and find out is this $30 airbrush something you want in your arsenal? So this is how the package came, um, wrapped in this little white box, pretty sparse packaging looks like, but I haven't gotten into it yet. And then it came with this little how to airbrush ebook, and we're just going to get rid of that. Actually, surprisingly, it came with a parts diagram, which I do not know why so many airbrushes do not come with a parts diagram. And that's very handy for somebody that's not familiar. And of course, like I offer advice um, to people about, you know, first thing you do with your airbrush, I am definitely going to be disassembling my airbrush. Definitely a little gritty pulling the needle out off the backside for the first time, but that will, uh, you know, I am positive that will get better as time goes by. You know, first touch on the on the trigger and you know, there might be a little grittiness in there, but really, you know, that's not too bad. Um if you never used a micron style airbrush before, you know, you got a spring tensioner right there and it is does allow it to get to a really soft back pull the indentation into the air valve is pretty strong a little tighter than I'm sure a lot of people would like but I actually like them being a little bit stiff doesn't bother me a bit once my finger is on the trigger it really doesn't bother me a bit so I'm not a big fan of soft triggers um, I've got a couple in some airbrushes so not a big deal to me yeah um, the crenellated cap you know pretty standard stuff put that in there never to be found again in most of my airbrushes because y'all know I don't use my training wheels came off I'm not seeing anything it jumps out at me as you know horrible so so far and that's you know the way those micron assemblies and also the way most of the GS GSI Creos assemblies work um, they're a little bit different but this is um, should actually mate up to a micron head assembly and i want to give that a test i'm going to pull the one out of my olympus micron and see if that is an actual true fit i was uh have always been curious at whether this would actually come with the micron style pin in there which is a little bit different than the you know single well two-piece swivel pin so this is more like the pin on the Iwata Eclipse and the GSI Creos. You can, in this particular unit, remove the entire air valve assembly. So I am actually really like that, that feature because, you know, one of the biggest pain in the butts is removing those air assemblies and getting stuff cleaned out. There's some lube up inside there. So I'm going to have to get that cleaned out. Look like that lube's going up a little bit too far into the, but it is some lube on that O-ring, which, you know, there should be some. This might be a little bit too much. But overall fit and finish so far, you know, not bad. We're going to find out if this Mac valve actually works. We're going to go ahead and disassemble that too. So the Mac valve assembly, you know, is looking like, uh, you know, I'm going to find out if all these made up, of course, but the Mac valve assembly is looking like an actual working product. And, uh, you know, I'm going to find out when we get into it. But, you know, this style is what I like to see. Unlike a certain, I won't name them, manufacturer who has some ridiculous screw in the bottom of their airbrushes that I really have an issue with. But we'll just leave them nameless for now. On my left hand side, this is the original Micron head assembly off an Olympus um, MP200C Micron, which is one of the original Microns. And this is the head assembly in the point zero. So it looks like from mating up from standards in height, we look the same. Um, 
I'm not going to measure it with calibration, you know, calibrated tools right now. But from what I'd already heard is these would match up. So I'm going to give this a shot and see if my Micron assembly does fit in this. And there it is, as was expected. Um, the Micron head assembly does screw directly on there. The O-ring is actually fitting down there. So, yeah, very, very interesting. And it's actually, you know, this there's no grit, no issue there. So it's pretty smooth, the threads on the inside, at least, of the airbrush. All right, you guys probably won't be able to make that out. Um, but I can tell you, just by looking at it, definitely the needle is not... Um, even to the naked eye, I haven't even taken and looked at this on our microphone, a magnifying glass rather. Um, even to the naked eye, there's no doubt that the needle's a little bit on the rough side, but we're gonna assemble it and run it as is and see what we got going on. So, one interesting thing to note so far, the fit and finish of this has mostly been okay, but can you hear that? The little needle limiter in the back. That's, that's, you know, it should, the O-ring should actually hit and make that a smooth. Now, now, does your needle, needle limiter work? Yeah, it works. Um, for me, it's a non-issue. All it does is sit on there on the back of my handle and look, look pretty because I, I never, We'll use a needle limiter like for anything ever. So for me, doesn't much matter. For you, you know, that that might matter a little bit. I suspect I could probably, you know, there's an O-ring in there. So that and that O-ring should, you know, kind of hold, and those threads should be a little bit smoother. Um, just to keep it from rattling around, I'll probably change that O-ring out to a bigger O-ring just to keep it from moving around and I think that would that would take care of it um, how accurate it's gonna be is it gonna move around in practice you know that remains to be seen um, but you know that doesn't take it's not rocket science engineering the way these needle limiters are designed in the first place so that's just a you know you know you're not paying for high quality fit and finish Although up until that point, up until that, so far, and the fact that the needle's pretty rough, so far everything I've taken apart has been like, you know, really surprisingly, amazingly surprisingly good compared to some of the cheaper airbrushes I've seen in the past. So. I'm gonna get ready to load it up. I've already mixed the paint a little bit, just a tiny bit of paint and with some reducer in here. This is a detail airbrush, so you're gonna have to treat it like a detail airbrush. You go dumping some thick paint straight into it, it's probably gonna clog and your good time is gonna be over with before it even starts. All right, so on my first first test sprays, um, just started spraying around, messing around. Didn't really get into tuning any of my paints, but I did come up with a couple of things right off the bat. Um, had a couple of spots, a uh, little bit of graininess on the outside edge of some of these, um, which is indicative of probably that needle not being really fine polished. But the other thing I had going on here was this, these skippy spots. However, However, skipping spots like I'm talking about right here, that's usually indicated of a head leak in, you know, around here where air is leaking around the head. It would not be fair for me to judge this airbrush on these spots based on that since I disassembled my airbrush originally, removed the head, and I didn't use a sealant back. So all I've done is I put a little bit of sealant right here 
in between on the threads here that I showed you guys how that broke apart earlier and then I put that back together and now I'm going to work around with some really thin paints and see if I can get this to perform um, with really thin paints in a super detailed setting. Alright, so after um, getting some really thin paints in here, I was able to get some really rather decent lines and even small enough that I know I could feel comfortable being able to do eyelashes with this. You know, I'm going to get this needle a polish. You know, there's some spitting and some sputtering going on around here, but that's as I was playing around with reductions and ratios and things like that. Um, you know and getting a feel for the airbrush of course this is the first time i've had it in my hands i was able to get really micro fine dots uh, some pretty good clean lines that were a fairly decent size once i tuned my paint in and uh, without any problem and it can get better all right so thoughts impressions on this uh, you know from my first run through i had a chance to paint a couple little things with it and spend a little time with it and to be honest no negative surprises um with the exception of the aforementioned you know how creaky bad that needle limiter stop is um <clears throat> i can't really fault anything about this i'm i'm like is it, I, when i say there's no negative surprises there are some surprises in how much i was able to do with it i'm going to and i'll make a video on that i'm going to do some tuning on this airbrush and see how much further i can get this along without actually buying parts um, like for instance i already know my micron head assembly will fit in here i could slide a micron head assembly and a needle in here and of course that would probably make a tremendous impact on the airbrush um but you know at that point what a micron head assembly costs and and all that i might then i'm creeping up into spending a ridiculous amount of money on this airbrush where I might as well go ahead and buy a PS770 which would be just like this only you know it'd be a PS770 straight from the factory um, so some things would be a little bit higher quality um, so I'm gonna leave a link down in the description below if you guys want to check this out what am I gonna say do I recommend that you buy a $30 airbrush well it depends and the reason I say that is because I hesitate, and I've said this before, I hesitate to recommend a detail airbrush to beginners. And because of that, because it does take a little bit of playing around, it takes you tweaking your paints to make them flow right. And you have to use thin paints, and of course you'll experience more clogs, things will be more finicky. You know, I even have issues with my actual Micron being finicky about the paints that it'll use. It has to have thin paints and it likes to run on that, you know, low pressure. I will say that if I was doing any reasonable size lines, um, not micro fine lines, I had absolutely no problem with this brush at all. So it was capable of doing a pretty small line without any, any issues. I only would say that my very, very finest lines weren't quite up to the standard of my Micron. But that's not necessarily what I expected to get. And, you know, so I'm actually surprised at how clean the lines were. And it's very minor. It's a very minor thing. And I know with a little bit of tuning and a little time on the brush that I can probably improve that. I'll make a video of what I do to it and see what the results are from there. It's amazingly surprised the quality of this versus some of the other cheap airbrushes I had. Um, the reason I picked this particular airbrush had been recommended from some other people. Um, heard Dave G talk about it many, many times. Um, he's a guy that knows more about different airbrushes than probably anybody on this planet. But anyway, guys, I'm Bill Kennedy with W. Leon Artistry. Hope you get a little something out of this video. You know, comment stuff will be down. Hit me up at the comments below if you have any questions or if you have any commentary on it. And uh, yeah, y'all have a good one. Bye.